Are you looking to raise chickens but not sure which breed is right for you? Look no further as we explore some of the various breeds and their unique characteristics to help you make an informed decision. For this first part, we will focus on the soft feather group of chickens. You might be asking, don't all chickens have soft feathers? The answer is no. Soft feather breeds have a layer of fluff between the body and outer feathers, while hard feather varieties don't. Soft feathers tend to be stronger and don't break as easily as hard feathers. Do you have soft feather breeds at home? Let me know in the comments. Let's start with the standard heavy breeds. First up is my personal favourite, the Australorp. The Australorp is my national breed and a popular contestant at many shows. They come in three recognised colours, black, blue and white. My standard calls for black eyes and a very curved shape, so don't be fooled by the many commercial black layers that people try to pass off as an Australorp. This is the real thing and in my opinion is the epitome of chicken beauty. Next is the Barnavelda. If you're into chooks with looks, then this is the bird for you. Barnavelda came from the Netherlands originally and come in the very striking double laced pattern. This double lacing is difficult to get right, so breeders who do achieve perfect double lacing deserve a lot of praise. They lay dark brown eggs and can be crossed with Arakanas to produce hens that will lay olive coloured eggs. The Brahma is an Asiatic breed known for its large size and mean gaze. Don't be fooled by the shape of the brow however because Brahmas are actually very gentle and docile birds. Their eggs are tinted and often have some speckling on them. Next is the Dorking, a breed from the UK. Dorkings are not very common in my area but I find them beautiful and striking in their own way. Dorkings have five toes and many five-toed breeds are descended from them. Next is the Faveroles, a breed from France which have been somewhat declining in numbers. While they come in a variety of colours, the salmon variety tend to be the most commonly kept. They are bearded, muffed and have feathered legs and feet, making them a good choice for those living in cold climates. They also have five toes, hinting at their Dorking ancestry. Next is the Langshan. They are Chinese in origin and are part of the recipe that created the Australorp. There are two varieties, the Chinese and Crowed. They're a reasonably popular exhibition breed given how well they clean up when preparing them for show. The New Hampshire is an American breed known for its placid nature and excellent meat quality. The New Hampshire is one of the breeds that is good if you have children as they're fairly easy to tame, although they aren't the best layers. If you're looking for a friendly and docile breed, the Orpington might be for you. Their fluffy feathers and gentle nature make them a favourite among families. The roosters look surprisingly like a hen, which is surprising at first. The most famous Orpington colour is the buff, but consider trying black, white or blue. The Plymouth Rock isn't the most common breed in the show pen, but they're a popular backyard breed due to their reliability as layers. The Plymouth Rock is also popular because they're sex linked. This means that you can sex the chicks shortly after birth. With Plymouth, this is done by determining the size of the spot on the top of the chick's head. The male chicks have a larger silver spot than the females. Next is the popular Rhode Island Red. Known for their hardiness and egg production, these chickens are great for beginners and experienced farmers alike. With rich red plumage and bright yellow legs, Rhode Islands make a striking feature in your backyard. Rhode Island Reds are most likely part of the recipe that created the famous Isa Brown chickens, along with Plymouth Rocks and Leghorns. For those interested in a dual purpose breed, the Sussex is a top choice. These chickens are known for their excellent meat and egg production, making them a versatile option for your flock. Personally, I'm not a lover because I find they look a little boring, although the speckled Sussex is a handsome colour. This breed comes in a wide range of colours from light, coronation, lavender and silver to buff, brown, speckled and red. Next is the face only a mother could love. The Transylvanian Naked Neck is perhaps an acquired taste due to their peculiar appearance. They're excellent pets to have in warmer climates, though they also fare well in chilly parts of Europe like Germany. Their productive birds are popular among European smallholders due to the efficient way in which they can be plucked. This conversation starter can be crossed with a silky to create what people call a showgirl. Last of the heavy soft feathers is the Wyandot. This American breed is very popular both in exhibition circles and backyards. 
There are many recognised colours and even more experimental colours, but the most popular is probably the silver laced variety. Not only are these birds stunning to look at, but the hens make very good mothers and will go broody very reliable in the warm months. That's it for the heavies, now let's move on to the lights. First up is the Ancona, popular in exhibitions due to its stunning coloration. These birds come from Italy and it's good to know that Mediterranean breeds tend to be very flighty or nervous and prone to flying away from people. They're excellent learners. The next one has two different names depending on where in the world you're watching this from. The Aracana or Americana is a popular breed due to their blue or green eggs. The American variety has a heavily muffed face, allowing small waddles but disqualifies for ear tufts. However, the Australian standard allows ear tufts but will disqualify even small waddles. The Australian Aracana came about from seven eggs which were brought here from Britain. These eggs contained seven cockerels who were selectively mated with desirable hens to produce a breed as close as possible to the British Aracana. Next is another Mediterranean breed, the Andalusian. This breed, like most Mediterranean breeds, is very flighty. Andalusians are blue and distinctly Mediterranean in appearance with their white earlobes and light and tall stature. Hens rarely go broody and they lay quite well through winter. Next is the frizzle, which is purely an exhibition fowl. The frizzle is highly ornamental with its feathers that curl back towards its head. This is a breed that many people think doesn't exist due to many other breeds having the frizzled feather gene. I can assure you, however, that this is very much a breed and appears in my Australian Poultry Standard 2nd Edition. Frizzles come in black, white, buff and blue. The Hamburg is a beautiful breed, which is fairly common in backyards and always features at the local poultry auctions. By far the most popular colour is the Silver Spangled, though they come in Gold Spangled, Silver Penciled and Gold Penciled. They have a rose comb and relatively large and beady eyes. I was very tempted to buy a pair once until I was told that they could be flighty. Personally, that isn't a quality I like in poultry. The Larkenvelder is not a breed that is commonly seen in Australia. This breed instantly grabs your attention due to the sharp contrast of its plumage. This breed is a very useful layer, however, they're not known for sitting. The leg bar is considered rare in my country, however, they were once very popular due to their auto sexing abilities. Due to it being created by a hybrid cross of Plymouth Rock, Leghorns, Cambars and Aracanas in the case of cream leg bars, they have taken their auto sexing from their Plymouth Rock and Cambar ancestry. Cream leg bars are one of the breeds that lay blue eggs and they nearly died out in Australia in the 1970s due to blue eggs being unfashionable. Leghorns were made famous by the Looney Tunes character Foghorn Leghorn. When I first got chickens, this is one of the only breeds I had ever heard of thanks to that character. Leghorns are exceptional layers and do not tend to go broody. If you want the egg production of a commercial red and the longevity of a heritage breed, might I recommend the Leghorn. They come in a range of colours including brown, buff, cuckoo, duckwing, mottled, pile and exchequer, my personal favourite. Keep in mind that this breed may not be the friendliest due to being Mediterranean. The Phoenix is a visually stunning breed. The Phoenix is a visually stunning breed and, and it's an ancient one, hailing from Japan. Many Japanese breeds have impressively long tails and the Phoenix is no exception. This length is caused by the rooster's inability to go through a, an annual molt. Some birds manage to hold their tail feathers for life. The colours recognised in Australia are those recognised in the Old English game. Please keep an eye out for the hard feather video coming up in the near future. The next one is one of my personal favourites, the Polish or Poland or Crested Dutch, whatever you want to call it. They've been around since at least the 16th century and are probably one of the most famous of the crested varieties. For their size, I think they lay a very respectable egg, though you might be disappointed if you expect supermarket sizes. There are three colour groups of Polish, the laced, self-coloured and white crested. The Sicilian buttercup is a very rare breed. It's the only breed that has the buttercup comb, which is reason enough for some people to want to breed them. They're an egg laying breed and as such are not ideal for meat. They're non-sitting as well, so don't buy them with the hope of having them raise babies. 
One of the most famous breeds is the Silky. Some people think they're Bantams, but they're in fact a standard breed, just on the smaller side. Silkies get their name from the unusual softness of their feathers, which resemble fluff more than feathers. Another strange aspect to the Silky is their deep violet, almost black skin. Their face, comb and wattles are deep blue or purple, and their feet are bluish black. Silkies are modest layers, so they're generally kept for their looks, personality, or the simple fact that they make exceptional mothers. The Spanish is the final Mediterranean breed I will mention in the soft feather variety. Personally, I'm sorry, but I find them hideous. That might be a hot take, but there it is. The unique characteristic is their large, smooth, white face. Being Mediterranean, they're not overly friendly birds, although they're always exceptions. They're non-sitting and lay chalk white eggs. The Volvelk is somewhat similar to the Larkenvelder, which is where its heritage lies. They're somewhat popular flighty birds. When they were created from Larkenvelders, the goal was to create a utilitarian breed with buff plumage instead of white to prevent it turning grey due to the coal mines that were present in Germany at the time. The penultimate breed is the Wellsummer, a small and unassuming breed that is always represented in a show. Wellsummers are very useful layers and they've enjoyed a small amount of commercial success in their history, especially since they don't tend to go broody. The roosters tend to be very active and fertile. Finally for the soft feather standards is the Yokohama. Like the Phoenix, the Yokohama has beautifully long tail feathers in the males. This breed is critically endangered in Australia and I've been trying to get my hands on a few of them for breeding purposes but haven't been successful. Whether you're interested in ornamental breeds like the Silky or practical options like the Leghorn, there's a chicken breed out there for everyone. So do your research and choose the breed that best fits your needs. Did I miss a breed that you love? Perhaps one that lays dark chocolate eggs? Let me know in the comments if you know which one I'm talking about. Thanks for watching this guide to soft feather chicken breeds. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more helpful tips and information.